Okay, it's another video, and it comes to you through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bar Shem Yahweh Shai, Bar Shem Rekar Kodash. The Heavenly Father's name is Yahweh, and His only begotten Son's name is Yahweh Shai. And as it is written in the scriptures, and it's commanded of us to continually praise the true name of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. As a matter of fact, when Yahweh Shai taught us to pray in the Our Father prayer, it, it's, it, specifically, it specifically says, Hallowed be thy name. Okay, as a matter of fact, let me show you that. So that's why we start out these videos by praising the name of the Father and His Son. Right? This is found in the book of Matthew, the sixth chapter. And this is how Yahweh Shai taught us to pray, right? The ninth verse. After this manner, therefore, and these are the words of Yahweh Shai, you see it written in red. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, pray you, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, hallowed. So when we start our videos and we give that greeting, all praises and glories due to Yahweh Baal Shem Shai, and which is, that's in the ancient Hebrew. We're doing exactly what Yahweh Shai said to do. He said, hallowed, he taught us to pray. He said, hallowed be thy name. And now we also hallow the name of not only the Father, but the Son as well. Okay? Because um, uh, if you go into Matthew, the 28th chapter, the same book, when Yahweh Shai sent his disciples, which became apostles, when he sent them out there to do the work, this is what he told them. This is the command he gave them. And Esau calls it the Great Commission, right? Let's go right to the point. Matthew 28 and 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Why all nations? Because the Israelites are scattered among all nations, especially now. Baptizing them in the name of the Father. See? Hallowed be thy name. So that's another way of hallowing the name of the Father. You gotta, it's your duty, you teachers out there, to teach those that have been called into this knowledge, this truth. It's your duty to teach them the true name of the Heavenly Father and His Son, man. All right? Because the 19th verse says, Go ye therefore and teach all... These are the words of Yahweh Shai speaking. He said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father. So if you... If you're teaching and you're not teaching in the name of the, the true name of the Heavenly Father, your teaching is garbage, straight up and down, man. If you're not teaching the true name of the Father and then the Son and the Holy Spirit, right, then your teaching is garbage. You're not doing it the right way, okay? Even if you're speaking the truth, you're not coming in the right vibration. You're not coming in the right name. As a matter of fact, this scripture comes to mind, Proverbs 30. Let's read that right quick. Proverbs 30 and 30 and uh, 4. Who have ascended up into heaven or descended? Who have gathered the wind in his fist? Talking about the power of the Heavenly Father. Who have bound the waters in a garment? Who have established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is his son's name? If thou canst tell. And there's no way that the Heavenly Father is going to give us all this understanding. He's going to reveal to us all these deep mysteries, you know, these, these uh, hidden symbols of what, the, what, what is said in scriptures, allegories, reveal to us the understanding of these parables. And somehow he's not going to reveal to us his name and his son's name, the true, his true name and, his, and the true name of his son. It doesn't make sense. So any Israelite that's telling you, oh, we don't have the true name of the Heavenly Father and his only begotten son, that's complete horseshit. Okay, excuse my uh, French. That's complete horseshit. Okay? There's no way we're going to get all, all this. And Pastor I've been saying it. And, I, I, you know, every now and then I say it. You know? And, and, and uh, you know, some of you brothers out there have said it. There's no way we're going to get all these mysteries, the understand of these mysteries, and somehow not know the true name of the Heavenly Father and the Son. That's just, it doesn't make sense. All right? So... Going back to the initial point, right? Yahweh Shai told us when we go out there and teach, 
Go ye therefore, because he, he told that to his disciples, which became apostles. So that applies to us because we're, we're the disciples and apostles of Yahweh Shai. Okay, the, the word apostle just means sent away. All right, sent away to teach. So go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father. So you have to know, for you to do that, you'd have to know the name of the Father. And what's his name, his true name? Yahweh. That's in the ancient Hebrew. And of the Son, Yahweh Shai, and of the Holy Spirit, Raka Kodash. That's in the ancient Hebrew. So we're doing it the right way, man. We're doing it according to how Yahweh Shai said to do it. Okay? Um, let me go back to Matthew, the sixth chapter. And then we're going to go into our topic again. Yahweh Shai taught us to pray, Matthew 6 and 9. After this manner, therefore, pray ye our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Let's read the NLT version. Pray like this, our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your name be kept holy. So you got to learn the name of the Father and his only begotten Son. All right? And uh, through the years, if you've been watching my videos, you always hear me say this. That's one of the most important things we can possibly learn in this, in this knowledge and this truth. It begins with the name, the name of the Father and the Son. Let me throw another scripture at you. Proverbs 18 and 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. And that name is Yahweh. His son's name is Yahweh Shai. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. See? So we need that we need those names to be safe. We need those names. And, and you know, it's not about learning the name and, and but you're still doing wickedness and you call upon that name. No. We have to call upon that name in sincerity and truth to get the benefits of knowing that, knowing those names, okay? We have to call upon those names in sincerity and truth to get its benefits, okay? Yahweh Bashim Yashai ain't going to help no hypocrite, all right? As a matter of fact, the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son despise hypocrites, all right? So there you go, Proverbs 18 and 10, all right? As a matter of fact, show you that uh, the um, the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son despise hypocrites. This scripture just come to mind, Matthew 7 and 21. Just because you know the names doesn't mean you're, you're like the old saying goes, you're in like Flynn, all right? <laughs> Matthew 7 and 21, let's read it. It says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, as in Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, see? But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven, see? So if you're calling upon the names, but you ain't doing the will, that you're, you're likened unto a hypocrite. And you can call upon the name till you blew in the face. The names till you blew in the face, they will not benefit you if you're being a hypocrite. See, so we're to remember that. Matthew 7 and 21, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But uh, what does it mean to enter into the kingdom of heaven? It begins with the deliverance. When Yahweh Shai comes and delivers his elect, Right? In the name of the Father, the only begotten Son. When Yahweh Shai delivers his elect, that's the beginning of entering into the kingdom of heaven. Okay? Uh, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. So we got to do the will, man. You can't be no hypocrite. All right. So that being said, let's get into the video. Basically, I, I want to add to something that Elder Pastor said in this video here. And he's re reacting to vocab and vocab's video where once again vocab is trying to uh debunk the fact that we're israelites this time he's focusing on uh the island of puerto rico which the island of puerto rico the uh tribe that was predominantly predominantly there was the tribe of ephraim ephraim right ephraim in which is one of the 12 tribes of the nation of israel so here we have vocab now, you know, uh, the devil himself <laughs> trying to debunk that. So this is where I'm going to play a portion of Apostol's video. And then I'm going to fast forward it to around the 20th minute. I think the point he makes is in the 22nd minute, but I'll start at the 20th minute. But for now, let me play uh, the first part of this video so he can introduce it. And then I'll fast forward it to around the 20th minute. So without further ado, let's go. Shalom, giving all praise to Yahweh, Shemel, Shai, Shemel, Kakwadash. 
Shalom to the 144,000 and the rest of the elect out there. Shalom to you all. And I'm going to entitle this video. They came here long before Columbus. They came here long before Columbus. That's a little play on they came here before Columbus or they came before Columbus, uh, which was a book uh, written by, um, what's the brother's name? Benjamin Knight. I forget his name. Anyway, somebody help me out. It'll come back to me, though, or should come back to me. Anyway, this this right here. Um, As a matter of fact, you know what? Let me just type that in in Google. Yeah, see what comes up. They came before Columbus. Uh, matter of fact, let me type in a book. They came... Okay, there we go. They came before Columbus. I believe that's the book Apostar is referencing that he just referenced. And I believe this guy was a, like he said, a Benjaminite. Ivan Van Sir Sertima. Ivan Van Sertima. As you see here, they came before Columbus. All right, the African presence in ancient America. Only thing is we're not African, <laughs> all right? We're not African, we come out of Israel. Okay, the real Africans were the Hamites. We come out the seed of Ham. We come out the seed of Shem, we're Shemitic, okay? And furthermore, that term Africa really goes back to so-called white man, Leo Scipio Africanus. So it's impossible for us to be African because we don't come out of his family line. The same thing with America. America goes back to a man by the name of Amerigo Vespucci. Amerigo Vespucci, right? And that was placed, uh, the landmass that we know as America today, that name was placed by a man by the name of Martin Walsemuller. Martin Walsemuller, which was a cartographer. Now, before this place was called America, it was known as the ends of the earth. It was also known as the fourth part of the world, okay, before it received the title of America. And that didn't come about until 1507, 1507, do your research. So there's, there's no, really, there's no such thing as African. There's no such thing as American. These are man-made constructs. Now you have today the average so-called so-called black person over here in America, so-called black, because we're not black either, calls himself African-American. That's a total fallacy. It doesn't exist. It's a man-made construct, African-American. The Heavenly Father didn't create no African-American. The Heavenly Father created nations of people. We all have our true nationality according to the Bible. All right? And our true nationality is that we're the Hebrew Israelites that the Bible speaks of. We're, our language is Hebrew. Our nationality is Israel or Israelite. Okay? All right. So that being said, let's get back to the video. Before Columbus, we're talking, we're talking, uh, you know, about 50, it says 13, we're talking almost 1,500 years, 1,400 years. There was... Because when he came over here, who did he who did he encounter? People. There were dark people, and they were they were called Indians, which uh, that's where you get the word indigenous. In in the gene of gene. Yeah, and those so-called. Oh, I'm sorry, that thing went to. <laughs> I wanted I wanted to go back to the. My mistake on that. Let's just. Play that again, the first part of the video. So Elder Pastor can, exp can introduce his video, and then from there, I'll, I'll fast forward it. So we moved just a little too fast, all right? But I didn't know it was going to, when I brought the video back up, I didn't know it was going to go right back to the 20th minute. So glad I caught that. Anyway, let's move on. They came here long before Columbus. That's a little play on they came here before Columbus. 
or they came before Columbus, uh, which was a book uh, written by, um, what's the brother's name, Benjamin Knight. I forget his name. Anyway, somebody help me out. Ivan Van Settima, as you just saw. It'll come back to me, though, or should come back to me. Anyway, this, this right here, um, this is pretty much a, a, a response to uh, Vocab Malone, the video they put up last night, or premiered last night, and then he did the video the day before that. Go, matter of fact, you know what I'm going to do? Let me do this. So this video was clearly a response to Vocab Malone's video, where he's trying to debunk the fact that uh, that the tribe of Ephraim, um, that they, uh, you know, during Assyrian captivity, uh, they fled from Assyria into the Americas, in particular, the island of Puerto Rico. Okay, <laughs> they were. There were Israelite women in the island of Puerto Rico? Inside joke. Yes, there were Israelite women, men and women, on the island of Puerto Rico. And Christopher Columbus knew it fully well, okay? Now, what you want to do is go and watch, absolutely you want to go and watch El Apostol's video, which seems to be getting a decent amount of views. It says, they came to the Americas long before Columbus. That's the video. This is an excellent video. And now, so, you know, he kind of introduced it. So now I'm going to fast forward to around the, the, the point I wanted to get to is uh, uh, around the 22nd minute, but I'm going to bring it back to the 21st minute because when I first saw the title, right, of this video, the first thought that came in my head was, well, wait a minute, Columbus had... Hebrew interpreters with him when he came to the so-called New World. He didn't go to America, he came to the islands. And I believe he touched on the island of Puerto Rico, if I'm not mistaken. But he had Hebrew interpreters with him, which is, which is concrete proof that um, uh, he knew what people he was coming to, to conquer. You know, the history uh, says that he was an explorer. No, he was a, he was a colonizer. He was a conqueror. That's why he came with the sword. Matter of fact, he made a statement. He said he couldn't put down his sword for an hour while he was conquering the people that he came to conquer. He came to take their lands and take their gold, their resources, and eventually take them as slaves. And that's exactly what he did. He, he took some of the Ephraimites and brought them back to Spain as slaves. Okay? And then there's a movie... Um, uh, starring that French actor, Gerard Depardieu, I believe that's how you pronounce it. Uh, uh, the movie is uh, The Conquest. Oh, The Conquest. Uh, what's the name of that movie? I want to make sure. The Conquest of Columbus, is it? Let's see. The Conquest. So it was a conquest. Conquest of Columbus. Fourteen ninety-two. I may get. I may have the title wrong, but I'm hoping. Okay. All right. It says here. Historically inaccurate. What's the name of that damn movie? And it's funny because the movie came out 500 years later from what Columbus did, which his real name was Cristobal Colon. Cristobal Colon. Okay. Now, supposedly his conquest is 1492, so 500 years later, 1992, that movie came out. Matter of fact, George Bush had celebrated a 500 year. Matter of fact, let me type that in and see what comes up. George Bush. George Bush celebrates 
500 years 500th anniversary let's see what comes up here we go George Bush former president of the United States no, that's not what I want This is from Public Papers, George Bush Library and Museum. George Bush Presidential Library celebrate exploration not only as the 500th anniversary of Christopher Columbus voyage, but also as the International Space Year. So there you go. Okay, so let me go back to the video. Where is it? All right, yeah, let me just let it play from here. He, he's his, uh, uh, his chief interpreter was a man by the name of, uh, I always forget this guy's name, uh, Torres, Del Torres. Look at Right. So, okay, let me bring that back. So, like I said, when I first saw the title of this video, I remembered the fact that Columbus had a Hebrew interpreter with him. All right. And I actually typed it in Google. Oh, now I kind of remember the point I was going to make with that movie. Uh, matter of fact, Gerard De, De. Right, here we go. There we go. Gerard Depardieu. And he starred in that movie. He's one of the movies that made him famous. I'm just trying to get the title of the movie. Let's see. You all. The movie came out in 1992. Why isn't that movie not up? It is. This is it. Took a little while, but it is right here. Conquest of Paradise. Conquest, because indeed that's what it was. It was a conquest by Cristobal Colon, a.k.a. Christopher Columbus, 1492. Now, in the movie, there's a scene. Matter of fact, you know what? Let's see if we can find that scene. Seen correctly. Seen. Seen from fourteen ninety two. Esdras, the prophet Esdras, Esdras book. Let's see what comes up. Oh, so this is from Israelites Gathering. So now, and we believe that that was historically accurate, that um, Cristobal Colon knew about the writings of the book of Esdras, which is found in the Apocrypha. In particular, 2nd Esdras, the 13th chapter, the 40th verse, because he knew 
that the people over there in the Americas were Israelites, were Jews, were the real Jews. And one of the reasons why he knew is because of those writings. He was familiar with the writings. According to that scene in the movie, he was familiar with the writings of Esdras. Uh, this is the book of uh, Second Esdras, and I'm going to play the scene for you. Hopefully I don't get a copyright. Second Esdras, the 13th chapter. We're going to go right to the point, the 40th verse. Uh, this is a vision that um, Ezra saw, right, that the Heavenly Father gave him. I believe Ezra was on the scene around 400, 500 B.C., somewhere around there. Okay? So this is almost... Um, this is almost uh, 200 years after the northern kingdom had um, gone into captivity. I believe Ezra was on the scene. That's an easy Google when, for you to find out exactly when Ezra was on the scene. But I believe he was on the scene during the 400, 500 BC, somewhere around there. And the uh, northern kingdom went into captivity underneath the Assyrians in 722 BC and came to the, uh, shortly after that came to the Americas. All right. And uh, Ezra speaks about it. That's how Cristobal Colon knew. Second Ezra 13 and 39. And whereas thou sawest that he gathered another peaceable multitude unto him, that he is Yahweh Shai. He's talking about, um, he's talking about uh, Yah Yah the deliverance that Yahweh Shai is coming with, which we're patiently waiting for. Those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land, that land being, a, being Israel, in the time of Osir the king, whom Shalmanazar, the king of Assyria, led away captive, and he carried them over the waters, and so came they in another land, right? And the scriptures back that up. Now, the Israelites were taken to the land of Assyria as slaves, captives. Read on, it says, but they took this council among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen, that would be the Assyrians, and go forth into a further country. And the Heavenly Father set that all up. Okay? Man's goings are of the Lord, as it is written. And go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt. And that would be the Americas. That would be the Americas. Because they knew about that history. Because going back to Solomon, which... Apostle Tom mentioned about Solomon and his Navy expedition ships. Solomon used to come to the Americas to gather wood and, and all kind of precious stones and all of that. He used to come to the Americas to gather that stuff. So when Esau came into power underneath the Borgia family, when, when that deadly wound, like it says in Revelation, was being healed, one of the first things Esau started doing is going around conquering. But to make himself look good, propaganda, he called them explorers. Oh, they were going out to explore the world. That's, that's total horseshit. They knew exactly. These, these were uh, masons, if you will, that were learned and knew exactly who they were going to conquer. You know, individuals like Vasco da Gama and Cristobal Colon and, Juan, and uh, Hernando Cortez, Juan Pizarro, guys like that. All right, they were hired by the elite of their day, the top banking elite of their day, to go forth and to find lands for the for the new elite that had just came into power, the Edomites, to find lands for them, and to steal the riches of those lands, and to enslave the people. That's really what it was about. But in when it, let let Esau tell it, oh, they were explorers looking for a shorter route to such and such. It's all BS, man. What does the scriptures tell us about Esau? He's the father of lies. Now, all his lies are being exposed. All right? So, going back to 2 Ezra 13 42, that they might there keep the, their statues, which they never kept in their own land. So, he's talking about the Americas. So, uh, so uh, Cristobal Colon knew exactly. <laughs> 
Now, let's play this clip here. All right, this is from uh, the movie 1492. Why do you wish to sail west? To open a new route to Asia. See, that, that's what that... that <laughs> find a new route to Asia. So you're going to... Wait a minute. You're already on the east, right? Where they were located. You're going you're gonna to sail west to get to the east? Wouldn't it make sense to sail to the east? You know, Esau's lies doesn't make sense okay now the, the truth is he was working for the as a matter of fact he was working for uh what's that isabella and for uh, king ferdinand and queen isabella and they were part of the edomite uh aristocracy all right the edomite aristocracy so those so-called explorers were hired by the Edomite aristocracy who had just came into power. This is shortly after the Dark Ages. They were hired by them to go and find them lands and riches and slaves. Right? So that makes the, mo the, mo the most sense. So this guy, Cristobal Colon, was an agent of the Ed Edomite aristocracy. Okay? That's the real truth. And his job was to go find lands Riches and slaves. And that's exactly, matter of fact, let's bring in the scripture, Micah 2 and 2. This is what these devils do. What, what do you think you have an occupation of Israel right now? All right, this is, this is their legacy. This is what they do. Which gives them the title of the wicked in the scriptures. Let's go to Micah 2 and 2. Start the first verse. Look at the subheading, woe to oppressors. Woe to them that devise iniquity. There you go. And work evil upon their beds. That's what the top banking families do. They're, they've been doing it ever since they came into power underneath the Borgia family. Matter of fact, the Borgia family was known as the first crime family. Why did they get that title? The first crime family. What were they up to? And then you, you had, what, uh, 300 years later, 400 years later, because the Borgias was on the scene around the 1300s, going into the early part of the 1400s. So about 300 years later, you had the Rothschild family, which I believe that the Rothschilds were descendants of the Borgias. So you had the Rothschild family. They came on the scene around the mid-1700s. When Mayim Shel Bawa, which the word Bawa means peasant, when Mayim Shel Bawa changed his name to, to Mayim Shel Rothschild, all right? And started that biking, not biking, started that banking dynasty. Okay? So that's these guys, man. Woe to the oppressors. They're the, the top oppressor right now on the planet Earth is the Rothschild family, man. Do your research. Okay? They're still in power to this very day. They were heavy into the financing of the slave trade, the Rothschild family. They benefited the most from it. You know, there's a term called cui bono, cui bono in Latin, which means who benefits. So you knew who committed a crime by the ones who benefit, benefited from it. So the crime of slavery upon our people, who benefited from the most? Who benefited, who benefited from it the most? There you go. There's your answer. So that's how you know who created the crime. Them top banking families they got something called old money. They're still making money hand over fist from something that happened more than three, four hundred years ago. It's called old money. Okay? So there's no doubt they benefited from it the most. So woe to oppressors, woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. Uh, Cristobal Colon and his voyage was a work of iniquity, simply put. And he's also responsible for genocide of, uh, of the... Uh, Basically, the tribe of Ephraim, okay, the so-called indigenous peoples, all right, the tribe of Simeon, because he was on the island of Hispaniola, on, 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 that, on that island, there's two tribes that share that island, all right, you had uh, 
the so-called Dominican Republic people, which is of the tribe of Simeon, and the so-called Haitian people, which is of the tribe of Levi. Now, in the prophecy in Genesis, it says Levi and Simeon are brothers. What does that mean? Meaning they share the same island, the same land. One half is Levi, the other half is Simeon. Okay? So, woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice it. See? Because it is in the power of their hand. Now, let's keep reading. And tell me, if it isn't, isn't that what Cristobal Colon did? And they covered fields, as in lands, <laughs> and took them by violence. Cristobal Colon said he couldn't put down his sword for an hour while he was conquering those people. As a matter of fact, when he first met those people, he saw how nice they were, how beautiful they were. They had a beautiful inside and out. And the first thing he thought about doing was making them slaves. All right, he, he, there's even a quote of him saying that these people would be these people would be great to make, be made slaves of, because he was on a mission. So this is what they do: they covet fields, and take them by violence, and houses, and take them away. So they oppress a man and his house, even the man and his heritage. There you go. Let's read that in the NLT. When you want a piece of land, you find a way to seize it. <laughs> That's what they are talking about. They were explorers. No, they were conquerors. You know, people of conquest. Colonizers. That's what they were. Explorers, yeah. Okay, so. When you want a piece of land, you find a way to seize it. When you want someone's house... You take it by fraud, like the land of Israel. They took that by fraud. The Balfour Declaration, nothing but fraud. You take it by fraud and violence. See? And, and remember, let's not forget, Esau's blessing was what? The sword, which represents violence. That's his blessing. So he uses, he uses his blessing whenever he can to benefit him. When you want someone's house, you take it by fraud and violence. You cheat a man out of... You cheat a man of his property, stealing his family's inheritance. This is what these devils do. And they, they're not going to change. They were created to do that very thing. They're not going to feel remorse. They're not going to change. As a matter of fact, there's a scripture in Revelation where it says, they repented not of their thefts. Let's get that. That scripture just came to mind. Hope you're being edified. All right. There it is right here. These devils are not going to repent. Even when they go down, they're not. Even when Yahushua comes and put his foot right up their ass, they're still not going to repent because they were created to be the devil by the heavenly father, Yahweh. Revelation 9 and 20. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, that's, that's going to start with these top banking families. The plagues is talking about is the nuclear destruction that the Lord is coming with. Also, the chariots bringing fire. So after, the fire, the, after that destruction, you're going to have these top banking families. They're going to survive it because a lot of them are going to be in these bomb shelters around, it, around the parts of the earth. Like it says in Amos, though they dig into hell, thence will I take them. So they're going to reside in them bomb shelters and them outer space retreats. So they're going to be the first ones to be rounded up by us, the Hebrew Israelites, begin with the elect, rounded up and be brought right into slavery. Psalm 149 to bind their kings with chains and nobles with fetters of iron. And one of their first jobs is going to be uh, burying dead bodies. That's going to be left about as a result of Ezekiel, the 39th chapter, over there in the Middle East. Okay, that's documented in Ezekiel, the 39th chapter. So, even in that state, they're not going to repent. I'm about to show you this. Revelation 9 and 20, And the rest of the men, which were not killed by these plagues, Yet, what plagues? The plague of the nuclear missile, right? Which brings the destruction of Esau's kingdom, right? Uh, yet repented not of the works of their hands, right? For creating such a devastating uh, uh, equipment, you know, for lack of a better term, the nuclear missiles. They're not going to repent for creating that madness, which brought about their own destruction. Yet repented not of the works of their hands which was which was which was evil the works of their hands was evil okay that they should not worship devils 
see, and idols of gold and silver and brass, see, and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk, neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, witchcraft, nor of their fornication, continually breaking the law of the Heavenly Father, nor of their thefts, nor of their thefts, yeah, the lands that they had stolen. So these devils are not going to repent. And that's the kind of that's the kind of enemy you want anyway. Because it's fun the fun is in, in breaking breaking them. And we are going to break them. Jeremiah 51 and 20. The Lord said, With with thee will I break in pieces the nations. So eventually we're going to break them, man. We're going to physically break them and mentally break them. Talking about the top banking families of this devil, man. Okay, let's go back to this video. Asia is the richest kingdom, the land of spices and gold. Yeah, they knew that it was, yeah, that's Asia. That's the to make them look good. Propaganda. They knew they knew exactly what they were coming to get. Okay. We saw the Israelites who dwell in those pleasant lands. Tells you Ephraim would dwell in a pleasant place. What do you think it means by a pleasant place? They have gold, silver, spices. All of the things that Esau's land didn't have. Because remember, Esau dwelt after he got kicked out of Mount Seir. Right? right? He dwelt in the Caucasus Mountains. Around that time, uh, they were dwelling in the Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia. That's where you get the term Caucasian from, which are the Edomites. And their land was barren and desolate. So they had to go around the world conquering people, taking their lands and taking their resources. It makes sense. At the moment, there are only two ways of reaching it. The actor there is uh, Gerard Depardieu. He's playing the role of Cristobal Colon. Let's hear that again. To open a new route to Asia. Asia is the richest kingdom, the land of spices and gold. At the moment, there are only two ways of reaching it. By sea, sailing around the African continent, the journey takes a year, or by land. But the Turks have closed. That's the same thing that Ezra said. The journey took about a year, a year and change. Here it is right here. You heard what he just said, right? Second Ezra 13 and 44. For the Most High then showed signs for them and held still the flood. They went around the Horn of Africa till they were passed over. And that area is known to have storms. I remember I did a video on that years ago. Okay, 45th verse. For, for through that country there was a great way to go, namely of a year and a half. Now, wait a minute, let's bring that back. All right, let's bring that back. Come on, man. Let's bring that back. Play that again. Two ways of reaching it. By sea, sailing around the African continent. The journey takes a year. Did you hear that? The journey takes a year. Sailing around the African continent. That's exactly what they did. The northern kingdom, right? Led by the tribe of Ephraim. Second Ezra 13 to 45, for through that country there was a great way to go, namely of a year and a half, and the same region is called Asaref, right? Which Asaref, I, I believe it means another land, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm wrong, someone can correct me in the comment section. But this Asaref is really talking about America, the Americas. In particular, this place called America, okay? Then dwelt there... Then dwelt they there until the latter time. We're in the latter time now. And now when they shall begin to come. See? So we're in the latter time now, as in the last days. Okay? So there you go. Let's finish out this. Or by land. But the Turks have closed this road to all Christians. There is a third way. By sailing west across the ocean sea. The distance is unknown. It's said to be infinite. Superstition. 
I believe the Indies are no more than 750 leagues west of the Canary Islands. Can you be so certain? The calculations of uh, Toscana. Now listen carefully. Marathi, Esdras. Esdras is a Jew. So what's worse? Esdras, see? And the brother, the brother who put the video together, he put he put the scripture there, Second Ezra, which I just read to you, Second Ezra thirteen and forty, from forty the fortieth verse to the forty fifth verse. You see, yeah, Ezra is a Jew. Minutes, and already you're a dead man for telling the truth. Yes, we are burning people for less. The men you're about to confront have no emotion. All right, so there you go. So. So, uh, so Cristobal Colon knew exactly who he was coming to conquer. Bear with me for me. All right. Let's get back to Apostar's video. Oh, hold on. He's his, uh, uh, his chief. Interpreter was a man by the name of, uh, I always Let me bring that back. And they were, they were called Indians, which uh, that's where you get the word indigenous. In, in the gene of gene. So it's, it's chronicled in his, in his, uh, his writings that he discovered other people. They were Israelites. He, he's his uh, uh, his chief interpreter was a man by the name of uh, I always forget this guy's name uh, Torres Del Torres. Look that up. And that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna look it up right now. Cause uh, even before I saw Pastor's title for his video, I thought about that. Because this is what I did. I typed in, did Christopher, did Christopher Columbus have Hebrew interpreters and translators? Because this is one of the uh, points we can use to debunk vocab. Okay, because Christopher Columbus knew who he was coming to conquer. The proof is he had Hebrew interpreter with him. Here it is right here. You heard what the pastor just said, right? Now, this is an easy Google search. As you clearly see, I typed in, before I started this video of course did Christopher Columbus have Hebrew interpreters and translators and this came up right off the right right off the shoot this came out Columbus brought Luis or Louis de Torres an interpreter with him during his first voyage de Torres spoke Hebrew see Aramaic Spanish, Portuguese, and French, and Latin. So he, and some Arabic. So he was a poly, what they call a polyglot. Look that term up, a polyglot. Okay? That's an individual that's able to speak many languages. All right? So you're going to tell me that, you know, we were told in school Columbus didn't know where he was going. He was, he just decided to take this trip on a whim. No, no, no. Col Columbus was a Cristobal Colon, that is. He was, first of all, he was a so-called Jew. That's number one, a small hatter. Number two, he was, he was learned. He was into masonry. He was a, a mason, and he was working for the Edomite aristocracy. And he knew exactly, by, by readings, he knew exactly who he was going to conquer. That's why he brought that Hebrew interpreter with him. All right, this Louis, this Louis de Torres. De Torres spoke Hebrew, Aramaic, Spanish, Portuguese, French, Latin, and some Arabic because he expected to encounter Asians. Come on, man. See, they, they keep pushing that Asian narrative. No, he expected to encounter Israelites, descendants from the ancient Israelites, going all the way back, stretching all the way back to when they fl fled uh, Assyrian persecution, in, in this case, the Northern Kingdom, led by a tribe of Ephraim. He knew. Cristobal Colon knew. Okay, he knew. He ain't going to encounter no goddamn Asians. <laughs> because he expected to encounter Asians. That's the cover story. Columbus felt de Torres' proficiency 
in Hebrew and Aramaic would be particularly useful. Wait a minute, why Hebrew and Aramaic? Because the people that he was, he was going to conquer in the Americas were of Hebrew and Aramaic descent. Okay, and those were the Israelites, those were the, the lost tribes, the northern kingdom, if you will, of the tribe of the nation of, of the nation of Israel. Uh, let me uh, pause this. Uh, yeah, I got a, a knock at my door. I have a brother here with me. If, if he likes, if he wants, he can say his name. Shalom, El, uh, Akin, Elder Ibad here. Okay. Shalom. Okay, so that was Elder Ibad. So I'm gonna wrap this video up. Because we we gonna we about to get out of here, but um yeah so Columbus man he brought uh, he brought um, a Hebrew interpreter with him okay and his name was and that was a, it didn't take me long to find this that was an e easy Google search okay Louis, this Louis de Torres an interpreter with him during his first voyage de Torres spoke. The first voyage of Columbus, that is. De Torres spoke Hebrew, Aramaic, Spanish, Portuguese, French, Latin, and some Arabic. Because he expected to encounter Asians. You you, you want to say something on that, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Please chime in, brother. Because I already said what my piece, so you you just came in. So. Itself, yeah. You know? <laughs> if you want to add to it, I don't know if you... If not... I'm going yeah. to just keep reading. <laughs> it says, uh, Columbus felt de Torres' proficiency. Now listen to this. Columbus felt de, Torres, de Torres' proficiency in Hebrew and Aramaic would be particularly useful. I thought he was going to conquer Asians. <laughs> Why would it be particularly useful? Because he knew exactly who he was coming to conquer. That, that's the deal, all right? So that destroys vocab, trying to debunk, uh, was, they, was, it the Hebrew, was they Hebrew in, in Puerto Rico? Some, something like that, you know, the loser vocab that he is. Apostle Gumbar, they yes, brought sir. that out in that movie, um, Conquest, 1492. I already played that. Oh, uh, yeah, that's yeah. all, yeah, yeah. Oh, but, yeah. But see, that's the spirit. <laughs> that's the spirit. Okay. See? So I already showed you the scene. I already showed you, uh, the, the, I even told you the actor's name. You know, even gave you a little history about when the movie came out. The movie came out in 19, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, 19, um, uh, 1992. And 500 years before, you had 1492. Okay, and uh, I even brought out how George Bush celebrated the 500th year of what Columbus did. Right. You know, I even read that to you. So, anyway, I'm... Play the rest of Elder Pastor and we're going to wrap this video up. Torres, Del Torres, look that up. That's, a, that's, another, that's another subject. Yep. And one of the languages that he spoke fluently was Hebrew. He spoke Hebrew, uh, Arabic, um, Latin, I believe Greek. I think he knew about five different languages. Yep. So he wasn't a dummy. Yeah, according to this. According to this uh, Google search, he spoke six. Uh, Hebrew, Aramaic, Hebrew is one, Aramaic two, which Aramaic is a, is a fancier form of Hebrew, right? Uh, Spanish three, uh, Portuguese four, French five, Latin six, and some Arabic, so seven. So he was what they call a polyglot. Polyglot means one who's able to speak many languages. So, like, you just heard what Apostle Tar said. He was no dummy. So why was he traveling with this Columbus dude? Why was he traveling with Cristobal Colon? Because they was on a mission, man. Well, no goddamn explorer. No, they were on a mission. <laughs> to steal the land, the resources, and ultimately the people. Because you had the Edomite aristocracy that just came into power. We're talking about the 1400s here. The deadly wound was healed and all of that, man. Starting with Spain. Yeah, starting with Spain. Spain. The first thing they, right, you, we, uh, El Apostol always goes into Granada. Mm -hmm. That was the first province that fell, mm -hmm. which at one time we held Granada. Us Israelites, at that time we were calling ourselves Moors. And then that fell to who? The Edomites. All right, something you want to say, bro? Okay, so let me wrap this up. 
I think he knew about five different languages. So he wasn't a dummy. That's right. There was, there was more than one boatload of uh, Cyrus H. Right, that's true. That was true. That's true. Uh, Gordon last said last Sunday, perhaps it was a two-way affair, right, because they were coming back and forth. Mm-hmm. Would some colonists returning to the old world, which was the Middle East, to spread the news, we do not know how long this colony lasted. Yeah, and then to you heard that Paul Star said he, they were located in the Middle East. So you, you, according to what we were taught by Esau, they were trying to find the quickest path, the quickest way to the to the China, China right. right? So you're going to sail west <laughs> to go east? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense, man. Oh, we're trying to find the quickest way to China. So you're going to sail west, right, to, to get to the east? <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, dog. But that's, that's, that's Esau for you. He's, he's nothing but a father of lies. But anyway, I made the point, you know, you can, like I said, you want to go check out El Apostol's video. I got the video queued up for you here. You see it. You can get for greater, you know. And, you know, we, as the scriptures say, we're, we're defenders of the gospel. You know, vocab come with his nonsense. All we do is just combat it with truth. Okay, because you know vocab ain't going to teach the truth. Because he, he's, he's Satan, man. He's, he's, he's one of the spawn of the father of lies. <laughs> he's our adversary. He don't care about us, man. And he's not supposed to. So with that, I'll say shalom. If uh, Elder Ibad wants to say anything. Shalom, I do. Okay, well, you know, he's a man of few words. <laughs> so uh, I'll say shalom, and I'll see you all in the next video.